In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Dear friends, today we celebrate the feast of the Most Holy Trinity. God is experienced as the Father, Son, and his presence is experienced as the Spirit. As we are here to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us pause for a moment and be sorry for the times we failed to have an experience of God. Let us try to be closer to him and closer to one another. Let's acknowledge his presence within us and around us. To offer this Holy Eucharist in a worthy manner, let's be, let us ask God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, 
May known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true, true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Put this question to the ages that are past, that went before you, from the time God created man on earth. Was there ever a word so majestic from one end of heaven to the other? Was anything ever heard? Did ever a people hear the voice of the living God speaking from the heart of the fire as you heard it and remain alive? Has any God ventured to take to himself one nation from the midst of another by ordeals, signs, wonders, war with mighty hand and outstretched arm, by fearsome terrors? All this that the Lord your God did for you before your eyes in Egypt. Understand this today, therefore, and take it to heart. The Lord is God indeed in heaven above as on earth beneath, he and no other. Keep his laws and commandments as I give them to you today, so that you and your children may prosper and live long in the land that the Lord your God gives you forever. The word of the Lord. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. The word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. By his word the heavens were made, by the breath of his mouth all the stars. He spoke, and they came to be. He commanded, they sprang into being. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Happy the people the Lord has chosen as his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Everyone moved by the Spirit is a son of God. The Spirit he received is not the spirit of slaves bringing fear into your lives again. It is the spirit of sons, and it makes us cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself and our spirit bear united witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, we are heirs as well, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, sharing his sufferings so as to share his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Bye. 
Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples set out for Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had arranged to meet them. When they saw him, they fell down before him, though some hesitated. Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you and know that I am with you always, yes, to the end of time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, dear friends. Today, the Holy Mother Church is inviting all of us to celebrate the mystery of the Most Holy Trinity. Today's first reading, which is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, tells about Moses, who reminds the people that the great God of heaven and earth has entered into a close and loving relationship with them. They should respond to him by their loving obedience. <clears throat> In the second reading, St. Paul is telling us that because the Holy Spirit is dwelling within us, we become children of the Father and co-heirs with Christ his Son. And the Gospel contains the final instructions of Jesus to his apostles. The background of the first reading tells us that Moses had led the chosen people from Egypt beyond Jordan and now he addresses them with his last instructions before they cross over into the promised land. The chosen people have been privileged beyond all nations. The true God led them from slavery by signs and wonders in order to make them his own people. He wants to give them a homeland of their own as the Lord of the universe, he has the right to demand obedience from them. If they and their children obey his commandments, they will be prosperous and will be rewarded to be happy in their homeland forever. We don't find the mystery of the Holy Trinity in this passage or in the Old Testament. The chosen people were not in a position to understand the mystery of the Holy Trinity because they were surrounded by those who adored many gods. Polytheism was prevalent at the time. Therefore, any knowledge of the Trinity or the persons in one God might have weakened their monotheism. It was only when Christ came on earth as the divine Son of God who promised to send the Holy Spirit, the third person in God, to strengthen and guide his disciples, that the concept of the Trinity was revealed. It was accepted without questioning from the very first days of the Christian faith, because it was felt that the existence of the three distinct persons in one God had a special part to play 
in the finding and spreading of Christianity. The father sent his son in human form who raised him from the dead when he carried out the father's will. The father and the son and the Holy Spirit to direct and govern the church founded by the son. While we admit the fact that there are three distinct, distinct persons in, one, in the one God and have valid reasons for doing so, we, will, we still do not understand how this is. We bow our heads in front of God who cannot be understood by our finite minds. Let's be happy and content today to say how privileged we are to know that each of the three divine persons has played in giving us a share in their life. Hence we understand how privileged the chosen people are and how wonderfully God is dealing with us. And in return, he is asking us only to obey his commandments as a proof of our love for God. Our love towards God is to be proved by choosing God in a positive way by obeying his commandments in love. <clears throat> in the second reading, St. Paul is reiterating the new relationship of the Christian to God. He speaks of the follower of Christ being adopted into the family of God. The adopted person lost all rights in his old family and gained all the rights of a legitimate son in his new family. He gets a new family and becomes an heir to his new father. The old life of the adopted person was completely wiped out and he was absolutely incorporated in the new family with a new father. Now St. Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit himself is the witness to our adoption into the family of God. Therefore, the past is cancelled and its debts are wiped out. We begin a new life with God and become heirs to all his riches and co-heirs with Jesus, his son. This is which a Christian inherits. We also inherit the same. If Christ had to suffer, we also inherit that suffering. If Christ has raised to life and glory, we also inherit that life and glory. When a person becomes a Christian, he has entered into the very family of God. Even though he did not do anything to deserve it, but God, in his amazing love and mercy, has taken the lost and the least, and in his mercy has cancelled the debts and granted the inheritance of his glory. In today's Gospel passage, we find the last instruction of Jesus to his apostles. In this meeting, he did three important things. He assured them the power from the Father. Nothing was outside the power of God who raised Jesus and conquered death. He gave them a commission to proclaim the good news and accept anyone who is attracted to the good news and wanted to be a follower of Christ. He promised them the presence of the Spirit, which they experienced in their daily lives. All the three readings are inviting us to meditate about the role played by God, the Father, who is a source of courage and strength, and God the Son, who gave us the good news about the Father, who is love, and the Spirit, in whom we experience the presence of the triune God who is always in and around us. This is our experience. Even when we think we understand the mystery of God, we know we are 
only at the beginning, at the beginning of understanding him. But Jesus has lifted the veil which covered the mystery and we know there is a meaning and goal to our lives. We have a father who cares about us. We have Jesus who died for us and we have a spirit, the comforter who guides us to the eternal trinity who is God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence, let us present our petitions before the Father who made us, the Son who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who renews us. And our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may make disciples of all nations who love, follow, and worship the Holy Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in authority may observe the laws of the triune God and safeguard the dignity of each person created in God's image. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, especially those affected by the pandemic, may be protected from fear and healed in body by the power of the Trinity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish community may grow in the life of the Holy Trinity and reach out in love to encourage the lonely, console the grieving, and support those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may rejoice forever to share in the eternal life and glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Silently let's pray for our personal intentions. <clears throat> God, our loving Father, answer the prayers of your people and draw us more deeply into your divine life that we may glorify you in the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord Sanctify by invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in that you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to carry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread to the world and in the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brother and sister, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, shall we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles and all saints, who have placed you throughout the ages, we may glory to be cornice in an eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul, as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. There are two announcements. The first one is Caris UAE is going to have their second annual gathering virtual on the 4th of next month from 2.30, 2 o'clock to 4.30, uh, 6.30 in the evening, from 2 to 6.30. More, for more details, kindly visit our website. Catechism classes came to a close. From next month onwards, the 9 o'clock mass will be open for registration. Thank you. And thank you very much for your great collaboration and cooperation during the pastoral visit. I'm sure it has brought joy to the parish. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hail, Hail guardian, guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse, spouse of the Blessed of the Virgin, Virgin Mary, to you, you God entrusted His only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph to us too. Show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy and courage, and defend us from all every evil. Amen.